Hi, today we're going to talk about Macro Express Pro. We're going to talk a little bit about its program and some of its menu options. To start right off, Macro Express Pro stores all of its macros in a single MEX file. You can create an additional file or open an existing file. You can back up your macros or restore them. You can also export your macros or import them from a current file. For example, Macro Express comes with a samples MEX file. Let's go ahead and open that now. You can see that it has several sample macros that you can import. You can select them individually or if you hold control on Windows or command with Mac, you can select multiple and select OK and we get our macros imported. Okay. Right now we're not going to use these macros, so I'm going to go ahead and delete them for now. Now we're going to look at Options, Preferences. These are the configurations for Macro Express Pro. You can customize these settings to your liking. Most of them are just fine the way they are, and you probably won't want to make any changes to them. But some of them will have little tweaks that you might prefer. For example, in Startup, I don't like the splash screen or Macro Express, the editor, to pop up when the program starts. So I tend to disable those. Now let's look at the Tools menu. Under the Tools menu, we have Restore Keyboard and Mouse Hooks. What this does is if you shift down in a macro and forget to release the shift key before the end of the macro, this will basically reset everything to the way it was before you started your macro. Another convenient tool is this Launch Mouse Locator, and this will give you the coordinates of your mouse on your screen or relative to the active window. This can be very useful for when you are using Mouse Move command or other commands later on. Now let's look at categories. You can create sub 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 categories if you like. For now I'm just going to go to this level. You can also rename categories you can also delete the categories. Something else you can do is set a password for running macros within a category, editing macros within that category, or viewing the macros within that category. If you do, it requires the old password, if you have one, to change it. If not, it would be blank, and a new password and confirming that new password. The last option with categories is enabling and disabling the category. We will get to that in a minute. Now let's look at macros. I can right click here and choose new macro, or from the menu I can choose new macro, or capture macro. Capture macro will capture my keystrokes and my mouse movements and mouse clicks and record them to the macro for me. There's also quick wizards. I have never found that to be useful. Feel free to give it a try if you'd like. Also, we can right click on a macro and see that we can edit it, copy, disable, recapture, delete, run now, export to a regular macro or to a playable macro, move to category, place on desktop, or see its macro properties. If we place it on the desktop, it creates an icon on the desktop that executes this macro within Macro Express. If we move it to a category, we can simply drag and drop, or this will allow us to actually choose the category from a list. Export as a playable macro will create a self-executing macro to a degree. You have to have Macro Express installed on the computer, but it does not have to be running to execute a playable macro. Simply exporting to a macro it no longer has to be in Macro Express. It's a self-complete macro, but you do have to have Macro Express running. And Recapture Macro will allow you to re-record the mouse and keyboard for a macro, and it places it inside the macro without having to recreate its activation. So I'm going to copy this macro, and we will name it Sample 3. And we are going to choose no activation for now. And here I have my new copy of the macro. So I'm going to disable this macro. And then if you remember earlier, I told you about enable and disable category. I was going to show you that later. Well, now I'm going to show you that. 
So if I enable and disable category, you'll notice it reverses which macros are disabled. It could be a handy feature. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete this macro. Now here's something else that's convenient. Let's say that sample 3 was an important macro and oops, I don't have that anywhere else. I can come over to the recycling bin and you'll notice here are my three macros that I imported earlier and my sample 3 macro. I can restore them if I need or empty or delete a single one from the list. Well, I'm going to empty my recycling bin because I like to keep things nice and tidy. All right, let's go through the process of creating a new macro. So the first thing I want to do is give it a name. And then I want to select the way that I want it to be activated. Well, hotkey is the most common. You can simply hold down Control, hold down Alt, and press E to get the Control-Alt-E command, if that's the one that you chose. Or you can scroll up and down until you find the key combination that you like. Now you'll notice that here are a few macros that already have the key command assigned to them. And Macro Express will tell you these are in use, so you probably don't want to use these. These just happen to be Macro Express specific key commands, which you can change if you so desire. The next activation is short key. In general options preferences, we had an option to set a prefix in the activation section. Well that prefix is what you type before you hit this short key. Um, by default it is a number sign number sign. I prefer a different character. But then if I put sample here, anytime I hit my short key prefix and then type the word sample, it will execute this macro. The next one is schedule. You have several options here. When the program starts, once, hourly, daily, weekly, etc. Each of these have different settings that you can configure. So you ought to play with this and just see what your options are for scheduling. Window title refers to the window title of the window, like these. And you can specify any window title here you like. When this that window title gains focus, loses focus, is opened or closed, it will execute your macro. So with the mouse, you can have left click, middle click, and right click on area of the screen, area of a window, or a specific part of a window. This would be the special components of the window that you could click on and activate your macro by clicking on. Or area of the screen or window, you specify a left and a top position and a right and a bottom position for the area that you want clickable to activate this macro. Now unless you know what controls are, you might want to just skip this section. It's kind of specialized. If you do know what controls are, you'll really know how to use this. Let's move on to directory modification. You can put a directory path here and then based on whether a file is created, renamed, or deleted within that folder, or a directory is created or deleted within that folder, or a few other options, it will activate your macro. Next we have system event, and you can see there's a couple here, resolution change, system color change. Probably not going to be using this very commonly. Process event. This is when a process starts running or stops running. You can specify what process you want to watch and trigger your macro that way. TCPIP is a good way to execute a macro if you get internet connection or lose internet connection. Clipboard text allows you to trigger a macro if your clipboard has certain text or acquires certain text within it. And then you always have none. So you can have a macro that simply can be called and run by other macros. The last thing I want to address in this tutorial is the system tray icon. You can't see mine because it's off the screen. But if you right click on the system tray, what you will get is Open Macro Explorer, which would open the window that you currently see. You can suspend Macro Express, which leaves it running but makes its macros not activate. And you can re-enable it in the same location. 
And then lastly, amongst all these other options, you can terminate Macro Express. And this will in fact close Macro Express so that it is not running. In my next tutorial, I will go over commands that you can use within your macros.